Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium, and on today's special festive Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to be showing you how we can use Nexus to create a really nice, naturally flowing snow rig. So this can be used for VFX background plates, it could be used for full 3D scenes, and it's going to give a really nice, natural, realistic falling of snow. You can also modify it to create a dust floaties rig, should you wish. So, let's jump into Cinema 4D, and we'll start the clock. Here we are in our scene then, and you can see we've got these falling particles falling pretty quickly, and we've got our Christmas Geo. Let's just come out of this camera, and we can see how the scene is set up. So we have this rectangular emitter, let's go to the XP emitter, object tab, the emitter shape set to rectangle, width 950, height 2000. In the emission tab, we've got it set to rate emission, a thousand particles per second, no speed, but we've got a variation of radius values here, 0.9 centimeters with 0.5 variation either side. So these particles are anything from 0.4 to 1.4 centimeters, and that's important for our simulation. So the way we've got these falling, the particles have no speed, but they're being pulled down by this default NX gravity. And we've also got this NX kill domain here, which is killing them off when they get outside the bounds. Let's make that invisible. So we'll go back into our camera. So let's start um, looking at creating our simulation. First of all, you can see obviously they're moving too quick and we need to simulate some kind of air and wind resistance here. And we're actually going to simulate this using an NX uh, speed modifier because it's really easy to adjust. So let's go into our menu and bring in an NX speed. It must be at the bottom below the gravity. We want this to calculate last. And in the object tab, we're going to change the operation from incremental to acceleration, but we're going to remove all of this exponential value here. And that means that this modifier actually isn't doing anything. There's no accelerating going on, so it's just the same as it was. But we are able now to create a maximum speed limit for our particles. Let's click this on and put that speed limit at, say, 85 centimeters. And now if we hit play, you'll see that, yes, we've slowed them down. Now, can you see that we've got some kind of random spinning motion happening in our particles? That is because if we go to our emitter, extended data tab, we have use rotation active. The birth rotation is set to random, but then we have simple spin active here as well with pretty small values in the axes for our spin amount and our variation. And that's giving us that spin. So back to the speed. We want the smaller particles to be less affected by the um, wind resistance and the air resistance than the larger ones. So to do that, we need to go to our NX speed. And what we need to do is map this speed limit to the particle radius. That's easy to do. We'll just go to mapping. We'll add a radius map. And the parameter we want to map to the radius of the particles is that maximum speed clamp. So before we get this set up, we need to set up the minimum and maximum range of radius values. So remember we said the smallest particles were 0.4, so let's put that in min. Biggest particles are 1.4, let's put that in max. And now we have mapped this range to the x-axis of our graph. So small particles on this side, biggest particles on this side. And the y-axis is just that speed limit value. So if we want the smaller particles here to have the full speed limit of 85, we need to put that right to the top. And we want the bigger particles to have a much smaller speed limit, we need to lower the big particles down. And now as the particles get bigger, they will have a smaller and smaller speed limit, so they won't be moving as quick. So now if we hit play, yeah, look, the smaller ones are moving way more quickly than the big ones. Brilliant. Now that we've got that sorted, let's actually create some snow geometry on these particles. Now, if you're using Cycles 4D or rendering in other renderers like Redshift or Octane, you'd instance them at render time. Uh, but we're going to do it using um, the generator to generate some geometry. I'll just come out of my camera and make this snow geo null visible. You'll see that we have got these three bits of very simple snow geometry, and all they are are Cinema 4D primitive flower splines 
extruded with an extrude nerves and that's it if you're wanting to do this accurately you should model some very accurate intricate kind of snowflake crystal geometry and use that and research what they should look like online but for us these simple shapes will do so what we're going to do is go to our generators we'll bring in an XP generator object and it says which emitter do you want to use so we'll drag in our emitter here we need to make our snow geo objects a child of the generator so let's drag those in one two three and let's set the multiple child objects mode to it'll just randomly pick one of those three objects for every particle and then the clone type let's set this to multi instances so we get really good viewport performance let's go back into our scene camera and now we will be generating actual geo and I mean we're getting really good viewport performance here even though we're generating all of these objects that's working really well okay so now we need to add a little bit more interest to the simulation so let's go to nexus and we're going to bring in an nx turbulence again we want this below the speed and this one will go to the object tab we're going to set it to voronoise let's set the strength to say 12 we'll increase that scale up a bit let's reduce the frequency hit play and this is just going to give us a little bit of swirly motion to our snow yeah that's looking good so maybe make that a bit bigger okay and maybe reduce that strength down just a little yeah that's looking nice okay so now a lot of people would stop here but this stage is key to making this look nice and realistic and it's going to give us that look where some of the particles are really kind of aggressively getting kicked up by a turbulence which almost gets them to defy the gravity and the way we'll do that is with another turbulence so let's just duplicate this one by holding control dragging it down here's our new one and we're going to use the very aggressive turbulence type of curl now if I leave this in default and hit play, it's going to almost take over the sim. But you can see that we're getting that nice kind of spin drifty effect of those turbulent particles. We just don't want it affecting everything. So first of all, uh, let's just reduce the strength down to something like four. It doesn't need to be that strong. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the curl options and we're going to be mapping these to get the movement uh, only on some of the particles. So these curl options are how it kind of mixes the velocities generated by the curl turbulence with any existing velocities the particles have and add adds them together which will make it faster we don't want that so we're just going to take add off completely so now it's just blend it's kind of mixing the two. If I put this on zero then that curl turbulence there's no mix it won't be having any effect at all yet look it's as if it wasn't there and as we start increasing the blend it's blending in more and more of that curl turbulence up to the point where we're getting near the top and it's almost defying all of that uh, velocity that was calculated before so let's have it quite high but we only want this blend to affect certain particles so we'll do that with mapping just like we did in the speed we'll go to the mapping tab we'll add a radius map we'll set the category we want to adjust the curl settings we want to map not that add parameter it was the blend wasn't it blend to the radius again we need to set up our radius range as before and now we want our smaller particles to be affected have that full blend and the larger particles not to have it so maybe something like that now let's hit play and some of the particles are going to be affected yeah look some of them are shooting off and we're getting that kind of spin drift effect as they fall down and some of them are just falling normally nice so then if we look at our beauty you can see that the effect really uh, pops when you add depth of field effects when you add motion blur and we get this really nice convincing realistically falling animated snow rig <laughs>